Dr. Patrick Jones here from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. And we're here at Red Butte Gardens in uh, Salt Lake City. It's a botanical collection uh, associated with the University of Utah. Really a great, great place to see a lot of plants. And uh, we do herb walks here. Uh, we did one this morning, it poured rain on us all morning and now it's beautiful and sunny, so <laughs> go figure. Uh, anyway, I thought we would just do a mini herb walk for you guys that can't come to Salt Lake City and see the Red Butte Gardens, Botanical Gardens. Uh, and we're just gonna look at the first five plants we come across and see if they're medicinal. And uh, here's one right here. This is lemon balm. Wonderful, lemony stuff. It's a mint, Melissa officinalis. Um, this is the plant they get the essential oil Melissa from. Uh, but we use it uh, not just for the essential oil, but for all of its properties uh, as an herb. Um, and the whole plant's the medicine. It's in the mint family. Uh, it has some properties for the nervous system. It's sedating, calming, nerving. Uh, sort of a nice bedtime tea. It's also good for anxiety, panic attacks. Uh, it's pretty good for depression and bipolar disorder, particularly if you combine it with uh, St. John's wort. That's a nice combination for a lot of people. Not everybody, but some people that's really the bomb. It really helps them out. Um, let's see, what else is lemon balm good for? Oh, it's antiviral. It has really good activity against the herpes viruses generally and herpes simplex particularly. Okay, and that's uh, the cold sore virus. So you can put that on a cold sore. In fact, I had a pretty good cold sore starting yesterday and ran out to the garden and got some lemon balm and chewed it up and stuck it on there and, uh, and uh, put another big lemon balm leaf on it and held that on there. It's actually pretty good birth control too if you do that, right? You got all that stuff on there. But uh, <laughs> she won't get anywhere near you. But anyway, uh, good for cold sores and that cold sore, gone, done, not gonna happen. So if you get it on early, that works really well. It's good for shingles too. That's a herpes virus, right? Herpes zoster, that's a uh, chicken pox. Uh, so you can use it for that. It's, uh, what else is it good for? Oh, very good for some people for migraines. Um, so uh, that's good. Uh, there's some good uh, promising research on it for Alzheimer's. Uh, so that's, uh, that's another application. Again, brain stuff, right? Um, the other thing that it's kind of good for, which is sort of interesting, is it's a thyroid depressant, okay? Some people have uh, experienced what they call thyroid storms. Okay, and uh, those are people that when they get anxious or afraid, their heart just races and they feel like they're out of breath and they're really uptight and panicky and, and it's a physiological thing, you know, and their heart races, that's from thyroid hormone. So they get upset and their thyroid gland says, oh, she's upset, she must need some thyroid hormone, cranks that stuff out and the heart just goes nuts. Uh, well, this fixes that, it suppresses thyroid function. So, you know, I guess if you had really low thyroid, I wouldn't recommend that you be on lemon balm long term. But uh, it's not the kind of thing you lose, use long term anyway. It's kind of an as needed plant. But uh, anyway, Melissa officinalis lemon balm in the mint family. So let's see who else we got. We'll just putter along here. This is hops. And it's not hopping yet because it's, uh, it's only just May. But uh, this stuff will climb up all over that trellis. It's a wonderful uh, ornamental for climbing up trees and trellises and stuff in your garden. Really fun. Um, the hop itself. Uh, and we'll put a picture in to show you, but the hop is the strobile, and I don't know what the heck a strobile is. It's a, it's not a flower, and it's not a pod, and it's not a seed. It's a strobile, right? Ask a botanist what that is. I don't know, but that's what they call them. And it, it kind of looks like a little pine cone. It's soft and fluffy, and uh, and that's the medicine. And you harvest those late in the summer, uh, almost in the fall, sort of late September, kind of. They'll look like, you know, they're just little green guys hanging off the plant. And then in the late summer, they'll start getting sort of a golden powder on them. And that's actually the medicine, is that, that dust. Um, and they smell different. You know, all summer they just smell like green leafy stuff. And then all of a sudden, late summer, they start smelling like hops. And uh, so that's when you harvest them. Uh, they use hops. It's a pretty good antibiotic, so they use it for that. It's also very calming and relaxing. That's why they put it in beer, right? It has a flavor, and it's calming and relaxing, so they, they put it in beer. Um, but it's good for you know, anxiety, insomnia, stomach trouble, gut trouble, you know, that's nerve stuff, right? Uh, so they use hops for that. Um, the other reason they put it in beer is because it's chock full of estrogen. That's right, beer boys. It's making you get in touch with your feminine side. And uh, so if you put a lot of hops in the beer, you have fewer bar fights and fewer soccer game riots and stuff. <laughs> Who knew, right? We all thought it was macho to drink beer. But anyway, hops, really a good medicine. And uh, again, those strobiles are the, are the thing you want. Uh, lupus is the genus. And uh, 
I'm sorry, Humulus lupulus is the species name. And uh, really a great plant, really an attractive ornamental. Plant some of that in your yard. I think you'll like it. What else we got? That's hops. Let's putter along this way. Now here's another one. We've got a whole uh, two feet and we found another medicinal here at Red Butte Gardens. This is lavender, right? Lavendula. And uh, this is also a mint, just like everybody else is. Uh, lots of mints that are herbs. Lavender, the, the leaf and the flower are the medicine. It's really aromatic, has a, really a strong o aroma. Uh, pretty plant, uh, when it blooms, it's got pretty flowers up on stalks and it's pretty. Um, it kills about everything. Antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal. Because um, it's a mint, right? They gotta kill somebody or they kick them out of the family. Uh, the other thing about lavender is it's very calming to the nervous system. So people use lavender for insomnia, uh, you know, stuff your pillow with it and help you sleep, have a little tea, help you sleep. Uh, anxiety, sometimes stress. Um, but uh, really a great little plant. That's a mint family too. Uh, lavender, so let's see what else we got. Oh, here's another mint. As long as we're doing mints. There's some more lemon balm right next to it. She's a mint. This is catnip, right? Nepita cateri, also a mint. You can tell a mint uh, because they have square stems and the leaves come off opposite and alternate. So I don't know if you can see that on here, but you can't see the square stems, but you can feel them if you roll them. But then you can see that the leaves come off two going north and south, two going east and west, two going north and south. That's a mint. It has both those characteristics and it has to have both. Um, catnip's another calming nervine in the mint family. Really good for belly aches, colic, diarrhea. Um, really good for babies with belly aches and colic. Uh, and it's also sort of mildly sedating. So if the little kid's got a belly ache, you squirt some catnip in him. It makes his belly feel better and it knocks him out. And what else could you want if you got babies, right? We've had a lot of babies. We know all about that. But uh, also, if the mother drinks catnip tea or takes the tincture, uh, I'm told by a lot of women who know about stuff like this that that also uh, contributes to the baby not being colicky so that the catnip chemicals are getting right into the milk. So uh, catnip, really a good little plant. So there's a one. What else we got here? Here's a rose up here. The rose family has five petals on their flowers. Um, and so uh, that's, that's a, an easy way to tell them. The, the entire family is, there's a lot of them. You know, agrimony's a rose, cinquefoil's a rose, uh, mountain mahogany's a rose, roses are rose. Um, but uh, they're astringents. They're all pretty much the same medicinally. And so what's an astringent? Well, an astringent is a plant that dries things up. Uh, so it's good for diarrhea, sore throats, uh, gum infections and inflammations, hemorrhoids, sitz baths for postpartum ladies, things like that. Uh, you can use the leaf, you can use the flower. So, you know, next time you got a little mild diarrhea, go out into the flower beds and pick some roses and make a little tea and that'll straighten you out. But uh, roses, rosa is the genus of this one, but uh, that's, a, that's another great little medicinal. Now well, here's some yarrow. Is that yarrow? Yeah, that's gonna be yarrow. So yarrow is, uh, it's not blooming yet, but uh, yarrow is another really important plant, really important medicinal. If I only had five, I'd probably have yarrow on that list. Um, it's antibiotic, it's anti-inflammatory, uh, um, it's wonderful for stopping bleeding. It's a vasoconstrictor, so it, if you get a cut, you can put the yarrow on topically. They used to call it uh, soldier wart. Wart is, uh, of, course, of course, the old English word for plant. So you got mother wart, fig wart, St. John's wart, right, and plants. Uh, this is soldier wart, so they, they would actually carry this, I mean, from the ancient Greeks all the way up to World War I and World War II, guys were carrying a bag of dried yarrow into battle with them, and if they got a wound, they'd pack the yarrow in there to stop the bleeding. I've used this countless times in my veterinary practice for bleeding, uh, you know, dogs that have been hit by cars. Uh, you give it internally, you can pack it on topically. Really a tremendous plant. Uh, also good for menstrual cramps. Don't use it if you're pregnant uh, because it's got some hormonal functioning there. But uh, other than that, a really very effective plant. The flowers, the medicine, and the leaf as well. The root is actually a medicine too, but it's different. The root is good for dental pain, topically. You can take that root and, and put it on a sore tooth and it'll numb your tooth. So yarrow, Achillea millifolium, another great plant. So there's our little mini herb walk from Red Butte Gardens. You ought to 
come down here sometime and uh, we'll do a big long herb walk and maybe we can even make it rain for you when we do it. We'd had that this morning. <laughs> Pouring rain on us. But uh, anyway, beautiful facility here, great plants. I'm Dr. Patrick Jones. If you'd like to know more about medicinal plants, go to homegrownherbalist.net and check out our school, the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. Uh, we have a lot of fun and we're learning a lot of things and we'd love to have you. Dr. Patrick Jones, have a great day.